Hey guys, we're going to go into our notes and you're going to find the title of the page that says blood. We're going to start there and we're going to discuss uh, if I had a test tube of blood, what would it actually be consisting of? We're going to skip the cellular components of blood if you still have that chart in your notes. And we are then going to move on through there to drawing uh, the different types of what white blood cells. So we're going to start with, like I said, the title that says blood. So blood is uh, sometimes called what we say a connective tissue. And this is simply because blood's job is really to link all of our cells and organs together. So although it is considered a tissue, we definitely know that it appears to be more of a fluid than what we would think a normal tissue would be. So what actually is consisting inside of blood? So while you're going through these notes, uh, these two bolded letters are your fill in the blanks underneath the blood title. All right. So you have a picture of a test tube and we're going to label the test tube and uh, put some information in there. Now, just follow along because I don't have a picture of the test tube. I have something like this. So we're going to talk about the different parts of the blood. The blood consists of two distinct elements, but three distinct parts which is kind of confusing until I get into it. So it's made of three main components. The fluid portion is called plasma. Now plasma is approximately 55% of blood that is found in a vial. So on the vial that you have beside you in your notes, I want you to draw about 50% of that vial as plasma. So draw a line halfway up the vial and then kind of put maybe a squiggly line or something off to the side that writes plasma and then identify what plasma is under number one. So again, plasma is the waters, the proteins, it's where hormones, platelets, nutrients, and waste all circulate through the blood. It's important to know that we can separate out the plasma from our red blood cells and our white blood cells because it's really important to understand when we donate blood that we're just donating um, the red blood cells, but we'll get into that later. So the solid portion or the formed portion of our blood is consisting of two other components. The first one is leukocytes. Now, if you're not sure what the word leukocytes means, it just means white blood cells. All right, we have lots of different types of white blood cells in our body, all that deal with immune response. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. So just above the line that you had drawn on your vial that had all of the uh, plate, sorry, plasma in, just please put a little small portion that says leukocytes or white blood cells. I will be using the terms leukocytes on tests and quizzes, so please come familiar with it. It is white blood cells, but that is also all called a leukocyte. The last one that we're going to talk about is one you're very common with is erythrocytes. Now, erythrocytes are actually our red blood cells. Our red blood cells make approximately 44% of our blood, our blood, and they are like um, these guys right here, they're bioconcave, meaning they kind of, they're circular with kind of a concave center. And what they do is their job is to carry oxygen. So in the test tube, please then show 44% of your test tube having red blood cells. So now you've filled in what the fluid portion and the solid portion is made of. You've written plasma, leukocytes, and erythrocytes, and you've shown it in the vial in your notes. So what you're going to do is you're going to skip forward in your notes a couple pages until you find a title that says draw the flow chart below that describes the type of blood cells. So we're going to go through and we're going to do a little flow chart in this space about blood cells. So we're going to start off with a couple of different things. First off, we have red blood cells or erythrocytes. Please don't forget I will use that word, erythrocytes. They look like this, they are bioconcave. So again, caving in in the center, they are important for carrying oxygen around our body. Then we have platelets over here on the other side. Platelets are really important for blood clotting and the response to uh, stopping blood from leaving our body when we cut ourselves. So that is what platelets are. And then we have our white blood cells or leukocytes. This is where the main portion of our flowchart is going to take off, so leave space for a couple more. So in this, we have something called lymphocytes and the eat and destroy version of white blood cells. So lymphocytes job is to create antibodies. 
the white blood cells also have a job of eating and destroying, and they are broken down into two categories as well. We have the monocytes, what we call a macrophage, and they can actually physically leave the bloodstream and move around the body. Or we have granulocytes, which stay in the blood and are broken down into three more distinct types. Granulocytes are made of neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. All right. Now, when we look at them, neutrophils are the more than 50 to 70% nucleus. So when you look in a microscope at something like a neutrophil, it'll be a pretty large cell with a very dark spot in the center. Basophils are really, really um, small. They're quite tiny. They only make up about 1% of our white blood cells, and they are very, very dark underneath a microscope because they're so small, they just look solid uh, purple, and when you look through the microscope. Eosinophils, on the other hand, actually take on an orange tinge, as you can see here in this picture. You can kind of see the background is orange. So they are also a type of granulocyte. We're going to show, I'm going to talk to you guys and show you guys pictures of macrophages and lymphocytes so you can also uh, identify the differences between them. But if you could put this into your notes, and have it under the flow chart that describes the types of blood cells because we are going to discuss them because you do need to know which ones eat and destroy, which are granulocytes and monocyte, monocytes. And then you need to know which ones create uh, antibodies, which is lymphocytes. Now, I would highly recommend, again, we watched it in class, but watched again, the StoryBots episode on how you catch a cold because they talk very much so about the macrophage and the antibody lymphocyte cells that happen, and they talk about granulocytes. So you may not have caught that when we watched it in class, but now you'll have a little bit more knowledge and understanding, and you can watch it again and kind of get an idea. Thanks, guys, and I will see you all later.